Hi, my name is Bryce. Welcome back to VHS Play. We are playing The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask and recording it all on VHS last time. Hey, we uh, did some things out in Nikana and um, that, yeah, <laughs> it's time. It is time to go do what I've kind of been dreading, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> it's time for the Stone Tower. Specifically, the Stone Tower Temple. We went up the Stone Tower, unlocked Doral, and uh, called it a day because, boy, howdy. Um, this dungeon is a lot. Uh, <laughs> and I've been trying to find a proper recording schedule time for it. Uh, and it's, yeah, yeah, it's just kind of a lot. Um, Can I get arrows? Yes, okay. Alright, so we've got arrows. We're going to slow down time because we're going to need a lot of it for this place. And now it's time for nightmare fuel. Don't mind me, we just have to do this, you know, three times. Um. <laughs> so yeah, Stone Tower Temple, it's just a lot. Like, it, it's a... It's certainly this game's largest dungeon. Um, and also, it does not help that the front door requires... Uh, the Elegy of Emptiness and playing it three times to open the way forward. Each time of which requires sitting through this little cutscene and all the shoops and the whoops and all that stuff. Um, also, hey, so we... we we stared a bit at, uh, at Link uh, and his truly horrific form. Um, that sure doesn't look like us as a Goron. That certainly looks much more like uh, Do Rami. Don't mind me, I'm forgetting names. Um, <laughs> also, our frames seem to be tanking, so let's scram. Welcome to Stone Tower Temple. We will definitely need some of these things later on. You're just not going to explode on your own, are you? Right. Fairies. There we go. Got him. We see that sudden symbol, and we've seen that before, so we know to throw light at that, but we don't have any way to throw light without an existing light puddle, and despite the open ceiling here, we don't have a light puddle. And furthermore, hey, that's, uh, that, that sun, 
He was kind of upside down, wasn't he? Hmm. Oh. Speaking of sun symbols. And I do really appreciate, like, you have a choice, but the choice is immediately apparent to go the other way. That's not ominous. Not in the least. It's fine. So far, so good. All sorts of buttons being held down. A door opens. Don't... No, that door definitely closes behind you. So if you're not holding down all the switches, it will close, I do believe. Not ominous at all. Flowers for Deku times and, you know, upside down staircases that. Which way does that go? It does go up. So, I know. I know to explode some things here. It's not entirely clear, though, so let's let's just leave that for now. thought this room was pretty dark, but now I get it. But don't tell me you still haven't figured it out. So, again, sunblock, this time facing, you know, the right way up. Don't have any light puddles. It's quite dark in here. Um, there is... Hookshot point. All it gets us is a stray fairy. However, if that room is directly below...
You found the dungeon map. Press start to view it and all that other stuff. Blue, flashing, you know. All the rest. Well, hey. <clears throat> so, again, dungeon map as an actually useful item. Um, that would have actually helped a lot for the puzzle that we just... Is it a puzzle? It's a puzzle. Um, the, the little bit of puzzle of just like, hey, blow up this floor that is a little suspicious looking but doesn't have like cracks or anything to like show that you need to explode it. Um, but, boy howdy, there sure is a lot of not much down here. And if we were to put on our fairy mask... then we would see that there is, in fact, uh, still a fairy in this room. So let's just go ahead and... upset some statues. I think it's a small key. Maybe I was wrong. I guess I was wrong. It certainly was not a fairy. Um, which means... Because I know where the small key goes to. Um, so... This is just like... Don't mind me just kind of seeing how this playing, this whole dungeon is like pieced together. If we came back up here, the door's closed, so we can't go back. There was a key here. Um, there were a key locked door. There we go. Uh, <laughs> there's a locked door up here and nowhere to go downstairs. And we could see from our map that we just got that like... There's clearly ways to go through here. Um, so ultimately, there must be a key somewhere in the very small play space that we were just trapped in. Uh, we've got ourselves another one of these sun blocks and no sun to actually do anything with it. We've got uh, whatever that guy is over there. Um, and water, which generally means Zora time. Also, one of these hands. So we might as well just get tossed up here and why? Small key for a trouble. on the ceiling. It's fine. <laughs> it does become increasingly obvious what the uh, gimmick of this dungeon will be. Especially when we press switches and things appear on the ceiling. There's a locked door. There's an eye with ice that we can do something about. We have ourselves a sun puddle. And one of these weird mirrors over here. Is that a mirror? This thing looks different from every your everyday mirror. an interesting visual effect. I'm, I'm just admiring it from afar. Um, but these mirrors are weird in that they are they don't reflect, they absorb light and then expend light. And it is like a one-to-one -one time ratio on this thing so that it does stuff. And like this 
reflection that doesn't actually like reflect like that seems like it's just using the wall texture and then doing some weird warping on it based off of where the camera is which is just neat anyway the visual effect like you can see the light it's not opening a church chest uh you can see the light like actually being pulled into the mirror like all the visual effects are moving towards the mirror itself you found the compass um which is just like a nice uh solidification of the nonsense of this of these mirrors also hey uh we found our way back to the entrance <laughs> Well, that doesn't really help us here. There's still fairies in this room. However, I don't think our fairy mask is helping as much. Because I think it's also taking into account the things that we cannot get right now. <laughs> things like chests on the ceiling or, you know, stuff that we just can't interact with it because it's upside down. Are these all piled on top of one another? Now we have seen this sort of situation before of a stacked pillar. I must say, this is one of my least favorite rooms in the game, I think. Um, because, like, this is a pretty simple and largely obvious solution. But these little respawning dust motes, what are these things actually called? It's a black bow. Just calm down and attack it. Look, there are just a lot of them, that's all. Those infinitely respawning black bows uh, are a nuisance. <laughs> In short. Um, I seem to be trapped behind an enemy I can no longer see. Um, but yeah, the, the black bows, they really do just make this room a nuisance because they infinitely respawn and they can hit you and knock you out of, you know, being in shield. And there is this whole puzzle right here all about capturing the light and then sending it off onward for the rest of the puzzle. And this one in particular we need to Cast our light to this mirror, cast our light to the next mirror, and then we can hit the sunblock. And already the black bows have respawned. And that little knock on my shield is enough to interrupt my, uh, <laughs> my aim 
which then means that the shield would no or this mirror would no longer be absorbing light and instead expending it. Um, <laughs> which thankfully we got that first try, but. It is, in fact, just kind of a pain <laughs> to do things in this room and have those black bows just, like, knock you out of alignment and ruin your aim and have light start expending early. And all of that jazz. This room is always kind of a nuisance. But I mean, really, what's a little lava to say a Goron? A Goron who can hit a switch. That turns off fire in lava on another switch. And I must say, I hate the switch timing. It is one of those things I have always struggled with. Also, there is apparently uh, just a switch around here somewhere. There it is. Um, if only we had some way to cast light onto that little sun up there. Uh, that actually summons a ladder right here, which is great. Unfortunately, we have no sun puddles. We have no way to throw light that direction currently. So, heck, we have to, uh, <laughs> we'll have to do the Deku route. Tell me how that switch is really tight, quite frankly. <laughs> It's really easy to, like, bounce off of any one thing along the way. There you go, Link. You figured it out. Hopefully we can do this without getting completely turned around again. It is always a time trying to deku backwards. I don't know what it is about that path there. <laughs> it does feel really haphazard and, and oftentimes just doesn't want to work. Um, <laughs> like, that's really about it. It's just like, it often feels like doing that Deku path thing there. Just, you, you just end up not going as far sometimes and I'm sure it's just a feel and not actually true, but man, <laughs> doesn't feel great.
That's the Garo Master. You can't fight him like an ordinary Garo. Just dodge those swords. To think that I could be defeated. Although my rival, you were spectacular. I shall take my bow by opening my heart and revealing my wisdom. If you shoot that which releases the sacred golden light into the blood-stained red emblem outside the temple, it shall rearrange things in which the earth is born in the heavens and the moon is born on the earth. Do not forget these words. Die I shall, leaving no corpse. That is the law of us, Garo. You got the light arrows. Send it to sea to power up your arrows. The light of justice shall target evil. It's a hip loop. I quickly dodge it if it charges at you, but you. Uh, if, but can't you do something about that mask it's wearing? Yeah. Hip loops are hot headed. They'll charge at you if you look them in the eye. If it comes at you, assume a defensive position. No. Offense. <laughs> Offense only. So, since I've rambled quite a bit about randomizer silliness. Um, there are settings for randomizer things that are um, ridiculous. <laughs> and you can turn on things like items could be in pots, or they could just be the freestanding rupees around the world. Um, this room becomes heckin' loaded <laughs> with checks if you do that. Uh, which is just kind of fun. Well, let's see if we can grab that fairy through the wall here. Thanks, Link. <sighs> Alright, so there doesn't seem to be a way into that cage from here. However, I can see that there's a switch in there, and I do want to hit it. Problem solved. We're way up into there from down here. So we've got the spikes down here, but it doesn't seem like there's actually anything to like hookshot onto. Yeah, there's just a doorway up there. Anyway, that's one of those things about this dungeon that is just kind of um, a pain about the fairies. <laughs> is if you don't know that switch is there, and you don't see it on your way by, and you don't think to like try to explode it through the fence, then you activate that after the fact, and then you have to come back to this side of the dungeon in order to do things. It's an Igor. Simply attacking is no good. I say you should pay attention to the subtle changes in its eye. Yeah. 
So there is a way to do this with bombs. I'm not very good at it, as you can see. There we go. There we go. But you can just like drop bombs at its feet and it will just smash them and instantly explode them uh, and instantly uh, <laughs> take a bit of damage. So it's actually kind of nice. Eight fairies. I personally do prefer to fight it with uh, just doing the basic. The basic strategy, which is shoot it in its eye with light arrows. Because, hey, it's a Zelda game. You shoot things in the eye. And getting shot in the eye with a light arrow sounds really unpleasant. That one was just for me. As it turns out, those things, terribly obnoxious. Alright, so uh, we have a chest up there. Um, before we go doing anything else though, let's scram back over here. Annoyingly, I think there is one chest that we can't do anything about. This is not where I wanted to go, actually. <laughs> um... Anyway, I think there is, like, one chest that we can actually, uh, activate without going to the other version of this temple. Don't mind me, I'm just completely forgetting the layout of this place. I think that down there, that sun switch, will create a chest back in this side of the temple. Like, I think right here there ends up being a chest, um, which means we are going to have to do the shenanigans of inverting the temple and then uh, uninverting the temple. This is not a great camera angle for that. hit that from here. Yes, but not in a way that matters. <laughs> Alright, this might take just a smidge of time because this is doable it's just like a fairly tight
There we go. The distance is like just enough for you to jump it as Azora. Otherwise, you'd have to like go around the entire temple again. Which is just a big old no thanks. That's the wrong song. <laughs> That's the right song. We're done in here so we can just get back to the entrance. Okay, so... The Garo man was saying something about not that one. Help! Casting light upon a red jewel to something something earth and heaven. And of course, that means, hey, we have this light arrow now that we got for beating him. So that seems part of the solution. And there was this red jewel out here. I do remember, I, I think as a kid, like I did, like, get kind of lost in trying to figure out what they meant by red jewel. It took me a little bit to find that. So I was thinking, like, I think I was, like, trying to find a red jewel on that big face uh, that is the temple entrance. Also, I forgot that we wanted a bean. And some water. There's a bean patch right here. Got some bugs, at least. 